Welcome back to Dromoland Castle in County Clare. It's our fantastic location this week on South Tonight. Now, as I was saying before the break, a Prison Dialogue is a charity organisation which aims to humanise prisons for all those who live and work in those institutions by opening up a particular kind of dialogue. But the ethos behind it can also be adapted to business and other areas of life. Now, a founding trustee, is Eddie O'Brien and he joins me on the show now. Welcome Eddie. Thank you very much Martina. Now um, tell me I suppose first up what is Prison Dialogue? Well Prison Dialogue is uh, the utilisation of a particular way of communicating which emerged in the late 1980s which is a sort of a new form of dialogue uh, and it involves basically uh, people sit in a circle there's no chairperson, uh, often there's no agenda, uh, and really it's a way of people coming together to learn to think and, t think and talk together. Okay, so traditionally, I suppose, in prisons, there are very distinct groups. The prisoners don't think the same way as the officers and the psychologists or whatever it is. So this is to get everybody leaving their prejudices, prejudices at the door, basically? Yeah, because, see, it originated before it originated in prisons because it's not just prisons have that problem you, you mentioned. The whole of society really has that problem. Um, so um, it's, uh, it, it's a, found to have been very useful in prison systems, and that's just one area it has been introduced into. Uh, dial this new form of dialogue has now found its way into major institutions. We have used it in my own company mm -hmm. and uh, I have been passionate about it ever since I first encountered it. And how did you encounter it? And can, maybe you could tell us briefly who is behind all this. Very briefly, I was doing my psychology masters in San Francisco. I'd taken three year break from my company. And while there, I encountered uh, a physicist called David Bohm, and he introduced me to it. And uh, it w the pioneers behind its development uh, have, have been uh, Dr. Patrick DeMaria, who died last year, uh, Professor Bohm, who also died a few years ago, and uh, an individual called Peter Garrett, who has very strongly helped the development of it. Okay, and so... Like you say, it can be used in all areas of life, but just because it's called prison dialogue, um, just to touch on that, you know, what actually happens in the, in the scenarios? I know you've said people talk around a in a circle. What else actually kind of takes place? Well, I suppose a practical example might be that in, in my own company, when I came back from the United States, I realised that there was a lot of conflict in the company between, say, management structure and the, and the people at, in the other levels of the company. And then I realised that there, there was actually a breakdown of relationship. So it was in that context then, for example, we started our first dialogue uh, group in the company and e people were free to attend or not attend. So we had our first meeting, for example, we sat in a circle, there was the management, uh, everybody in the company was pretty much there. And we agreed then that we would have, we would run it for four or five or six weeks. And uh, so that's what happened. Uh, people sitting in a circle, before we started a dialogue meeting, people were giving some sort of background theoretical idea of what it was. For example, it's not a, a place where you're going to try and persuade somebody else of your point of view. It's much more going to try and understand the other person's point of view, which may be very different than your own. Mm. So that then led to uh, quite a, an enormous amount of changes in our company. Okay, and uh, you would say that it, it helped the company survive pretty much through certain tough times, would you? Absolutely. In our, in our particular case, our company ran into difficulty and almost went out of existence. But it was the spirit of dialogue that had been, the foundation of that had been laid down. And I know for myself that it was that that kept the door open for it not to go out of existence and thankfully now we're stronger than ever. Okay, and um, just taking the prison model then, I mean, do you think that um, without this prison dialogue, 
that it leads to further reoffending or, you know, more yeah. disobedience, more violence, things like that within a prison context? Yeah, in a prison context, it was extremely interesting. At, at, in the first dialogues, you know, because in attendance at the dialogues were not just the prisoners and the people from prison dialogue, but some cases would be the governor, some case, a lot of the pr prison officers. So they started off with the assumption, like the prison officers may have taught that the prisoners, maybe the image of... Uh, uh, pigs might have come up because there was, t t and then on the other side of the kind of prison, the, the prisoners themselves thought of the prison officers in very uh, negative Probably terms. Yeah, yeah. What happened was when people start talking together, they they go beyond the image they have of each other. It's mm -hmm. like if you somebody tells you about somebody and it's a very negative thing about the person, and then suddenly you meet the person and you're talking to them. And your image that has been created by this false information will will change, mm. and so that's what happened. Okay. So now it's taken on into other situations. At the moment, there's what's called threshold prison dialogues, where it was discovered that when prisoners left the prison, they needed some sort of support. So there is now in Bournemouth there is the threshold prison dialogue where. The, the police and the other agencies all participate and it is being, right. yeah, it's very, very exciting really. So it sounds like part of it is that everybody has to somehow take responsibility for their own part in whatever the issues might be, you know, to, to say, well, yeah, well, that might be my fault and this might be... And, and in a sense, it, it's, that comes indirectly, Martina. It comes through understanding that the other person's point of view, yeah. that... It's almost like we assume things. Uh, I mean, your colleague before we started was saying that he had an interaction with somebody and his point of view was different than the other person's point of view. But they took that as a complete affront yes. and got very angry simply because he had a different point of view. Yeah. In dialogue, difference in points of view is welcomed. You see, so people then can suddenly, uh, you know, at... at uh, when I was in the prison at the dialogue group, I mean, prisoners will say things and you will be so struck by the intelligence of what they're saying mm -hmm. that any image you have about them is secondary. Yeah. You see, so okay. your relationship changes with them. And so now you're taking the, the concept out there and you're bringing it to, to people. Uh, you do some presentations like for the Chamber of Commerce and hospitals and Places Over the like years, that. yes, and, yes. and teaching uh, courses in adult education, I've done a lot of that. And now I'd like to take it more out into the open in, as far as my, my own involvement. Okay, and you plan to do that? How would you be up to doing more seminars and things like that? Yes, on, on, on my website people will get the information. There's a wonderful opportunity going to arise towards the end of this year. Peter Garrett, the founder of Prison Dialogue, uh, who is also introduced this in so many different arenas such as major uh, corporations uh, uh, he's coming to Ireland and I, I'm organizing his events in Ireland and it'll be a wonderful opportunity for people to encounter and this if you new want thing. to check out your website what is it again it is www.questireland.net okay quest is short for question by the way Okay, so <laughs> www.questireland.net. Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, you've given us a good introduction to it there, but uh, you can find out more, folks, on the website and uh, watch out for it as, as a concept uh, around the place. Well, thank you very much for joining us thank you very on much, the Martin. show. Now, tomorrow here, we're back in uh, Dumoulin Castle.